So now let's put the volatility question in the vector autoregression. This is actually one of the reasons why uh, we started using the vector autoregression. Remember the issue, we had decided we were running long-run dividend growth on dividend yields and long-run return on dividend yields. Using our return identity, we decided those two coefficients had to add up, that that represented a decomposition of volatility that answered the Schiller volatility test. That is a modern volatility test. But we were left at the, at, the, at the puzzle of how do you estimate an infinite period, period geometric sum of dividend growth. Well, the VAR lets us do that uh, within the limits of, of is the VAR accurate. Uh, so um, how, how do we do that? Well, let's impose the VAR. I added a few equations just to make it clear. Uh, the, return, the one period return forecast is BRDP. The two period return forecast is BR phi times DP. The three period free return forecast BR phi times BR times phi squared, and so forth. So the long-run return forecast is the sum of rho to the j minus 1 phi to the j minus 1 BR, or BR over 1 minus rho phi. So we can estimate this object here, the long-run return forecasting coefficient. We don't have to explicitly form a 15, 20, 30-year uh, forecasts. We can use the one-period return forecast and the one-period dividend yield forecast as long as the AR1 is, is sufficient to describe the dynamics and infer what that long-run forecasting coefficient has been. So you just run a, a one-period regression, the BR regression, and then take that combination of the estimated coefficients. That gives you the long-run uh, return coefficient. Uh, now looked at that way, so that the object we're looking for, BLR, is BR over 1 minus rho phi. Uh, our identity is that the long, we, we showed that those two things add up, which says now that that's the long, this is the long run return, that's the long run dividend growth, so BR over 1 minus rho phi, we just showed that's what it is. And, and just in terms of identities, wait a minute, BR 1 minus rho phi, BD over 1 minus rho phi, we've kind of proved that, but that's the same identity we had all along. Multiply both sides by 1 minus rho phi, and you have BR minus BD is 1 minus rho phi. We showed that to begin with. In terms of algebra, we didn't have to go through all this. But what going through all of it shows you is that these terms here, these combinations, in fact have the interpretation of the long-run regression coefficients and let us measure those long-run regression coefficients from the vector autoregression. So you can get there much more quickly, but you lose the nice interpretation. What you see here is, in a VAR, how easy it is to calculate these implied long-horizon return forecasts, which are the same uh, as variance decompositions. You can see what the answer is going to be too. Uh, the long run return, that's going to be 0.1 over 1 minus 0.94, uh, 1 minus 0.96. That, that's that object there. So the return, long run return forecast is going to be about 1. The long run dividend growth forecast is going to be about 0. Uh, and that's why long run returns are actually the nicest set of units to think about dividend yield volatility because it splits, it splits that into a number that adds up to 1. And 1 and 0 is easier to remember, at least for me, than 0.01 or, or other numbers. Uh, now we can do that. Let's go back to the actual data, um, back to this graph that I, this uh, table that I showed you earlier from discount rates. I showed you the direct regression line where uh, the top row, where we're actually computed 15 years of returns. The implied by VAR lines, let's look at the k equals infinity. Those are the ones where we go all the way out. That is BR over 1 minus rho phi. Uh, and you can see how those numbers, that's where those numbers came from. Those are the ones implied, in fact, uh, by the vector autoregression. So you can use vector autoregressions to uh, calculate long run return forecasts, uh, long run volatility decompositions from short run things, as long as you trust that the vector autoregression uh, does a good job. So checking it with direct forecasts is a good idea. Uh, with dividend yields, the consensus seems to be it is doing a good job. Mm -hmm.